Hey guys, coming at you today with a recipe to help you use up your fall harvest this year. A delicious, soft and moist keto zucchini bread. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. My name's Alicia and I'm a sous chef with a sweet tooth. And here we make delicious pastries, many from my time as a pastry chef. And my goal is to make the best keto desserts possible. So if you enjoy these recipes, please consider hitting the subscribe button, hitting the thumbs up, leaving me a comment. It all helps my channel grow and to bring you new keto desserts every Saturday. Today, a delicious zucchini bread. When I mentioned in my pumpkin cake video, that I figured out the perfect ratio of protein powder and coconut flour to make a super soft and moist baked good. I tested it on this and it was perfect. So I'm super excited to bring you guys this recipe. We're gonna start with preheating our oven to 340 degrees because this recipe does not take long to put together. I got most of my ingredients weighed out. I just wanted to show you guys how I do the zucchini because I've mentioned in other videos that I pretty much weigh everything and that's because I kept finding recipes, two cups of zucchini, one and a half cups of zucchini, nothing was in grams. And I couldn't figure out, like I said, one said lightly packed and that's just, how do you know what a cup of zucchini is? So I weighed mine out and eight ounces is about a cup and a half if you pack it down a little bit. But if you grate it right into a measuring cup, it's basically two cups. I use the big hole on my grater and I, I've already done some testing. So I got a half a zucchini. It's about a half of a large zucchini. They had really big ones from our local farmers at the grocery store. So I just grate it right into a measuring cup on a scale. So that way you can see how much it makes plus how much it weighs. Already at 7.5 and I probably have a bunch of zucchini in here. So put that down in there and then pick up all your stuff around here and you're at eight ounces. So it's about a full two cup measuring cup. But again, if some people say lightly packed, it'd be about a cup and a half. So if you don't have a scale, just grate right into a measuring cup. And when you get it pretty much full, you're at the right amount. Let's set that aside for now. I have a little bit of zucchini left. You can probably just add the little bit if you have some. That is going to change your macros though. I think eight ounces of zucchini is three grams of net carbs. Clean up all my zucchini. Keeny myths. And then the longest part of this recipe is beating eggs and your golden monk fruit sweetener for five minutes, but I can't talk to you while that's going. So you can literally do all this while your eggs are whipping with the sweetener. So you got your zucchini. I'm going to do just a regular loaf pan. This one is 8.5 by 4.5. I'm gonna spray bottom a little bit just to get the parchment to stick. And then because we're only doing those two sides, you wanna spray your other two sides really good. You can put parchment paper there too, but I just really need it to be here so I can lift it out easy. Just gotta scrape the sides a little bit to get the ends out. I have crease, if you have a bunch of parchment here, crease it there because your oven will make this roll up and get into the top of your loaf. You don't want that. So ready for that, set that aside. I'm adding pecans to my zucchini bread, but you can add any nuts you want or just completely leave it out. I did a half cup measured pecan halves, but I weighed it to 56 grams because that way you're accurate on your macros and then I chopped them up real nice. And then the last thing is to sift our dry ingredients together. Like I said, perfect ratio I figured out, 30 grams of coconut flour, one teaspoon of xanthan gum. You'd add salt here too, but I'm using salted butter, which is in my microwave melting. And then 80 grams of unflavored whey protein isolate. And I didn't try it, but I bet it'd be really good with a vanilla whey protein isolate or a cinnamon. Sift all these together and give them a good whisk because you want that xanthan gum incorporated. And then I'm spending a little extra carbs on cinnamon. I did not actually realize that cinnamon had so many carbs, but one tablespoon has two grams of carbs in it. So I splurged on a little bit extra cinnamon 
you don't have to. I like a lot of cinnamon in my breads, my quick breads. Okay, all good and mixed up. Now I could get on to beating my eggs and golden monk fruit together. If you have a KitchenAid and you don't tighten down this little metal piece often enough from using it so much, it loosens. I found that out the hard way when I was using my paddle attachment. This fell off into my mixer and took a bunch of the coating off of my paddle. So that's a good little tip there because that sucks. And if you're not in the room when that happens, oh boy. I was luckily right there, but this was loose. So make sure you tighten that. Put five eggs in our mixer. These are at room temperature. I actually pulled them out like three hours ago. If they're not at room temperature, you just have to beat it longer. You want it really thick and fluffy and it'll happen eventually if your eggs are cold, but it takes a lot longer. Now for the sweetener, I did a couple tests and I looked up a lot of different zucchini bread recipes because I don't actually have one of my own that I've used in the past. So I was just searching a bunch of regular zucchini bread recipes. Some of them had half brown sugar, half white sugar. Some had all white sugar. So I just decided why not go with a little bit more flavor with all golden monk fruit, but you can probably do half and half if you want. I did try it with allulose and it made such a soft bread, like even softer than this one, but it didn't look as pretty because it got, even though it wasn't burnt, or anything, it was really dark on the outside because the allulose caramelizes so much. And I only used a quarter cup of allulose. Even if I lowered the temperature or anything, it just got too dark. So I'm using all the golden monk fruit. I just waited out this morning. Oh, there we go. It's still solid in there. Okay, we're just gonna whip this for at least five minutes until it's nice and pale and thick. In the meantime, I'm gonna finish melting my butter. They might have been beating for about 10 minutes because I pulled them out, but they definitely were not warm. They were just like kind of cool still. So it took a lot longer to get to this consistency. You want it super pale and thick. You don't really need this to give any kind of volume. It's more just to make sure you don't get crystals like in your bread which I did have a couple of my tests. You can like kind of taste the sugar granules and that's why you beat our sugar so much in all the recipes I have is because you just do not want grainy baked goods. So once that's done, you are gonna slowly pour in one stick of melted butter. And then I did one tablespoon of vanilla. You can use any extract you want in your bread. Now I'm gonna be done with the mixer here. This is up to you, you can keep going. I just don't like putting the zucchini in there and it all just gets stuck on the whisk. So I just do the rest by hand. I add in our zucchini. You don't have to drain it or anything. Give that a mix. It all broken up. Oh, and I almost forgot my baking powder in my dry mix. Don't forget your baking powder. That would not be good. Luckily, I looked over my recipe like while I was waiting and I'm like, oh crap. So don't do that. <laughs> and then we're gonna add in our dry ingredients. And I can't remember if I did a whisk or a paddle with this or a spatula, but a whisk incorporates better than a spatula would. It's kind of a stiff whisk for this. It's not super thick now, but as the coconut flour absorbs, it'll get thicker. See, even the zucchini gets stuck on the whisk. Switch back to the spatula. Give it a stir, just make sure you get all the way down to the bottom. And then just add in your chopped nuts, if you're using them. So this is a nut-free recipe if you don't put the pecans in it. And then you just gotta pour into your prepared pan. I can't use my left hand to scrape, so gotta do it on this side. As much as I wish I were amnidextrous, I think that's the word. I am not. You get it all. Oh, it smells so good. Mmm, cinnamony. Okay. This is going to bake 
for 60 minutes. And the hardest thing about keto baked goods is knowing when to pull them out of the oven. But 55 to 60 minutes is the time frame here. And I usually just put a butter knife in the center of it. And if it comes out and there's like kind of like slimy batter on there, I keep it in for a little bit longer. So I'm gonna set it for 30 minutes, give it a turn, and then another 30 minutes. But I'll check it at 25. Gonna clean up here and I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. But then, of course, it has to cool. So I'll see you back here in a bit. Hey, our zucchini bread's out of the oven. Almost out of the oven. Still has a little tiny bit of batter on it. I'm gonna put it in for like three more minutes. I thought maybe it was done, but just a tiny bit of sticky batter left. So it should be done in just a couple of minutes. Okay, it was three more minutes. I'm gonna go in a different spot. Make sure I don't have any batter. I'm gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes on a cooling rack. And then we'll get it loose from these two sides and use our parchment paper to lift it out and let it cool on the baking rack until, preferably till completely cool. But I do have to go to work today, so I don't have a bunch of time. I'll try to let it cool for a while. So we'll be back when we get this out of the pan. It has been a hard 10 minutes to wait. I'm gonna take an offset spatula, try to go around. No, I think it's all loosened. Lift it out. Steamy, super soft and light. Ooh, can't wait for it to cool down a little bit. Be back to slice it. Okay, our keto zucchini bread loaf has been out of the oven for about an hour. I have to go to work soon, so we gotta slice into this guy. He's still pretty warm though. Gotta show you guys a cross section. So this whole thing, it's like super crunchy on the outside. Super soft in the middle. This whole thing is 20 grams of net carbs. Still steaming, but it's super soft, and fluffy and moist, so good. So if you cut each half into five, two grams of net carbs per slice, need a plate to put it on, that big. So yummy and buttery. We're gonna add more butter because everything's better with butter, but after this cools, you can leave it on the counter for a couple of days, but you want to get it into the refrigerator after a couple of days because it will go moldy because we don't have any preservatives or anything in this. And then toasted with some butter. Mm, mine's already warm, so don't need that. More butter. That is so delicious, soft moist, sweet, and cinnamony with a little crunch from the pecans. Mm. This is how my boyfriend loves it. If you're anything like me, I like more sweet stuff on top of my desserts. So I would put some peanut butter on this or Nutella or a little bit of warm with some vanilla ice cream. Perfect if you have a bunch of zucchini in your garden and you're sick of your zoodles. <laughs> Make it into a delicious zucchini bread. Hope you guys try out this recipe for yourself. You will not be disappointed. What other kind of veggies and fruits do you have excess of after this harvest season? Leave me a comment below. Also, don't forget to check out my Amazon links and the blog link to the full recipe in the description box below. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll be back with many more keto dessert recipes. Bye guys.